Thanks for tuning in to Stacker Chats. Stacks is a Bitcoin layer for smart contracts. I'm your host, Gina Abrams, and I'm joined by Stacks founder, Mani Bali, with an exciting update. So a research paper was recently released outlining exciting upcoming features for Stacks and Bitcoin in the new year. Can you unpack these papers, particularly SBTC, and what a trustless two-way peg mechanism for Bitcoin really means? Yeah, so um, I'm very, very excited about this work. Uh, this was done in a public working group uh, called the SPTC Working Group. And a lot of people have contributed to it, some, uh, some with their real names, some in an anonymous way, and, and so on. So it's, it's really like a cl collective uh, group effort. And the main thing that we've been looking at, and I think I've talked about this publicly before as well, uh, the solving the trustless two-way peg problem is actually very important for Bitcoin, right? And this is not just about the stacks Bitcoin layer. I would say in general for the Bitcoin economy, uh, almost for like a decade, I think it, it has been an extremely important problem to work on. And uh, the existing solutions that we had out in the market, they're all uh, centralized with, uh, you know, a, a custodian or at best, like, you know, some sort of a known federation where you, there is a set of actors that you have to know upfront uh, and trust them uh, for performing the peg functionality, right? It gets you to a certain extent, but uh, it doesn't get you to the full benefits of having a trustless peg, because as you can imagine, uh, you know, let's say a lot of people want to participate in smart contracts and they want to deploy their Bitcoin and they want to take their BTC from the main chain, uh, to a Bitcoin layer. If there is a custodian in the middle, um, then that basically puts a limit on how much people are, are willing to trust that custodian. And especially with the recent events of FTX and the collapse of so many companies in the middle, I think we really should be designing uh, fully trustless, fully decentralized systems or as close to those, those decentralized systems as possible. Uh, so the way uh, this group of researchers kind of like looked at the trustless two-way peg mechanism is really through economic design. Uh, so Bitcoin is locked in a Bitcoin script on the main chain. Uh, so the, the pegged asset on the Bitcoin layer on stacks, uh, it's one-to-one -one backed by Bitcoin at all times. Right? So uh, pegging in is actually the easy part, right? Like you lock your Bitcoin on the, on the script and uh, on the stack side, the consensus can read that information because stacks have uh, read ability for Bitcoin since day one. And, and it can mint you uh, the Bitcoin pet asset called SPTC. Uh, the hard part is always, how do you bring that back in, in a trustless manner? And for that, um, the, the system proposes a threshold group of signers. And the unique thing here is that it's an open membership system, meaning anyone can become a signer. It's a dynamic set, people can come and go. So you're not reliant on any known set of uh, uh, parties but it's a dynamic set and it's a potentially very, very large set, right? So the people who participate in Stacks consensus today, uh, so this is proposed as a future upgrade where they can do the work of signing the peg out transactions and they have real economic incentive, right? Like they have capital locked in consensus. They're already earning uh, Bitcoin rewards from consensus. So they, um, they have a economic incentive clearly in place uh, to do the work and keep collecting their Bitcoin rewards. That's that's kind of like the uh, the the high level of it. Okay, great, thank you. And how does Stacks uniquely enable this trustless two-way peg, um, both when it comes to Stacks as a protocol and Stacks the token? Yes. So I think um, even though in the Bitcoin ecosystem, the type of pegs we have seen are custodial or federated. Uh, but people have attempted more trustless pegs in other ecosystems, like for example, TBTC, uh, where they're looking at you know, some sort of a threshold signature set and, and, and they try to incentivize people to do it. And the approach here with SBTC, uh, it has some very, uh, uh, some big differences and, and it uses some unique properties of stacks that you don't get anywhere else. First of all, the, the stacks layer uh, with the new release uh, would basically benefit from a 100% of Bitcoin hash power, meaning that to reverse a transaction on stacks after a certain box, you would actually have to attack Bitcoin. And uh, to make the peg, peg out really secure, the peg out only wait for those number of blocks. So that when the peg out really happens, stacks uh, state is as hard to modify as Bitcoin state itself, right? And again, due to the way the stacks are designed, 
uh, most of the uh, transactions to set up like who can be the signer or here's a pegout request, it actually happens on the Bitcoin main chain, right? So you're not relying on an external layer or any actors that can potentially mess up security in that layer. You're just relying on the Bitcoin main chain that is setting up the set of signers, all the requests. So if you want to request your money out, you're actually doing a Bitcoin transaction and, and your, 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 your online money comes out of, of the script, which is really nice to have. That means that no, no other party can censor you. You only rely on the Bitcoin, Bitcoin miners and the, and the Bitcoin main chain. And again, for the capital that's locked in Stacks consensus, um, I think over there, uh, if you had some sort of a price oracle that becomes a external dependency and a potential security attack vector as well. Again, Stacks has this unique ability that it has an on-chain, on Bitcoin chain uh, price oracle. Like uh, you, you always know what the what the what the price of BTC STX price pair is, and that's used in consensus, uh, which is a very nice property to have because now the consensus uh, doesn't have any external attack vectors if you're using some some sort of external uh, Oracle that way. Uh, and obviously stacks can read transactions as well, which is a critical part of, uh, you know, uh, making sure that all of the peg information that's on the Bitcoin side is easily incorporated into consensus. And if there's a fork on Bitcoin, stacks would automatically fork with it. So these are some extremely unique properties of the stacks layer that make the peg implementation uh, really, uh, re really easy to do and in a secure way. And then I think the big question is also about uh, economic or practical viability of the PEG, right? Uh, because a, a, a lot of these earlier solutions, um, they had to introduce wrapping, unwrapping fees on their PEG because they have to justify the, the new system. Whereas for Stacks, like uh, people are already earning BTC rewards out of consensus. So there's no need for additional wrapping, unwrapping fees uh, through the PEG. Uh, so the peg could actually be free to use other than the Bitcoin you know, transaction fees that, that, you, that you have to pay. And that's a re really important property to have because now uh, you, know, you can have very high throughput. People could peg their BTC in and out as much as they want because they're not paying additional fees over there. And in terms of the circulating supply, uh, we've seen over the last year or two that uh, even today, I think more than $100 million of capital is locked in consensus. And, and, uh, and earlier we've seen uh, north of a billion dollars locked in consensus as well, which means that the circulating supply of SPDC could be actually pretty high. And which purely from a practical commercial perspective is very important to really kickstart a DeFi ecosystem or other, other applications in which uh, SPDC can be deployed. You need a certain level of liquidity and, and use there and, and the SPG circulating supply in a practical way could easily easily um, get to those numbers, which is also a somewhat unique property for, for subsistence. Okay, thank you. Now, how does the trustless peg for SBDC differ from other two-way peg implementations and other just tokenized Bitcoin projects? Yeah, I think uh, we, we should touched on some of that. I think most of the differences are coming from the unique properties of the stacks layer because it's tightly integrated with Bitcoin. It follows kind of like, you know, Bitcoin forks. It, uh, it benefits from 100% of Bitcoin's hash power in terms of uh, reversing transactions that have happened. And then uh, you can actually do just pure Bitcoin transactions that stacks can read, right? So that way, uh, the, the setup of who the threshold signers are or the pegged out transactions, they could just be done on, on Bitcoin directly. Uh, so I think I think in, in many ways, Stacks is unique because of this tight kind of like connection to Bitcoin and this uh, trustless peg only kind of like makes the connection stronger, right? So uh, that's the way to think about it. And I think if you compare this to other uh, federated systems, I think the big thing to understand there, and I fully understand that there are uh, certain kind of like, you know, circles in the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem we just generally want to avoid any other assets or any other tokens. And I think for them, it makes it very, very clear that, look, if you want to design a peg, you could either trust a custodian or, or a set of uh, federation members, or you can have economic in incentives on the other side. But you're trying to bring BTC over to a layer and to create economic incentives on the other side, kind of like almost by definition, I uh, need to have some other asset that is creating those economic incentives. So you can pick if you if you really, really don't want to use other assets, then you're limiting yourself to a, a, a custodial or a, or a federated peg. Uh, but if you care about trustless open membership systems, 
uh, then you also have to admit that those are sort of like not possible without having economic incentives uh, on, on, on the layer on the other side. Okay, great. And how do you envision essentially the size of this opportunity? You know, how do you compare Bitcoin layers to layers in other ecosystems? Yeah, so I think if you look at last year, uh, Ethereum layers kind of like started taking off. And if you look at the, the high level functionality of those layers, there are two interesting properties uh, that they have. One is people can easily move uh, ETH capital into and back from the layers, right? That's one thing. Uh, the the other, other thing is that uh, the security of these layers is pretty much backed by uh, Ethereum security, right? Like it depends exactly which layer you're talking about, but without going into the details, at a high level, it's easy to design Ethereum layers where they're they're really secured by, by the base layer security. And they have, you know, obviously full smart contracts in the layers. On the, on the Bitcoin side, Bitcoin obviously doesn't have, you know, full smart contracts or fully expressive smart contracts at the base layer. So in many ways, you need the layers even more. Right, because you can't build sophisticated application at the base layer by design. And, but then there has been this challenge of the trustless two-way peg that can you easily move BTC capital in and out? And then is the layer actually secured by Bitcoin security? And I think with the current design, we come as close as possible to it because if you reverse transactions on the stacks layer, you basically have to go and attack Bitcoin. So it's giving you giving you that property that people will be able to kind of like reverse their transactions on stack and the state is secured by Bitcoin. And then you have this free movement of BDC in and out, uh, which is which is I think now it now you're talking about layers that are uh, sort of like similar to the functionality you would get in a Ethereum layer. But in many ways, they, they should be more in demand because you can't really program the base layer for Bitcoin, right? Most of the applications would actually be built in the Bitcoin layers and not, not, not in the main, main chain. Very interesting, thank you. And um, we're talking about the white paper. What are the next steps? Um, when might the community be able to anticipate this and, and potentially get involved? Yeah, so I think uh, this has been sort of like a big focus over the last uh, uh, several months, but I think the broader ecosystem has sort of realized uh, that uh, the, 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 what we, you would consider like, you know, core infrastructure, it, it requires work, it requires engineers, it requires open source developers. And over the, 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 the previous months, we have seen several entities that have contributed more engineering power or more open source developers are kind of like working on it. So I think this is uh, one of those things that uh, if you're building something in a truly decentralized way, things are you know somewhat slow and you have to coordinate with uh, multiple individuals or entities and so on. But the, these working groups that have come together have been pretty efficient, right? Like, so uh, just like the SPDC working group, there are people from various kind of geographic locations or different entities, and they're trying to come together to now uh, think about, okay, the design is there, the paper is there, how can we start making even code progress as well, right? And some of the timelines are pretty aggressive. I don't want to commit to anything uh, right now, but I would say uh, there's a lot of business need. I think a lot of uh, application developers, a lot of people uh, really see the value in this. So if there is a strong alignment from various businesses that, hey, we really want this thing implemented, then it automatically, you know, more importance, it gets more importance and more resources are, are dedicated to kind of like now basically start building the system out. And I think, I think uh, uh, my personal guess is sometime next year, uh, we, sh we should see something very concrete and live. Okay, something to look forward to. Now, um, Quick question, you know, given this interplay between stacks and Bitcoin, is there any dynamic for essentially MEV attacks? Yeah, so I think uh, MEV is very interesting and uh, we actually took a, uh, the, the working group took a pretty uh, uh, strong stance there because there's a reason why Bitcoin is simple, right? Like you, um, Bitcoin is simple. There isn't much happening there in terms of MEV opportunities. And in many ways, that's a good thing, right? So there isn't a lot of incentive for Bitcoin miners to uh, reorg the chain, even, even at short time intervals and so on. So the way this, the, the new version, the new proposal of the stacks layer works is uh, there is a certain number of blocks, let's say 100 blocks or something, um, in which stacks has kind of like its own security level. And even that security is higher than the current version. And we, we, can, we can get into that later. But after that 100 block or so period, it starts to follow Bitcoin's finality. Right. So why the 100 block window? 
there are other reasons as well, but one big reason is that that means that any MEV opportunities are really happening at the stacks uh, layer and not at the Bitcoin layer, because you know it's obviously much cheaper uh, to attack a Bitcoin layer than to attack the mothership of Bitcoin, right? And then after 100 blocks have passed, that's like such a deep reorg anyway, that if someone can really do a 100 block deep reorg on Bitcoin, then the, we, have, we are dealing with much, much bigger problems than, than any short-term MEV stuff, right? So in many ways, the design is such um, that Stacks layer absorbs any MEV activity. And it sort of makes sense, right? Like the, the, that Stacks layer is more complex and is more experimental. And if miners are kind of like fighting over each other for, for any MEV uh, type opportunities, that's totally fine. Bitcoin is not impacted, right? So in, in, in many ways, we felt that that's, that's the right design trade-off to make over there. Great, thank you. Well, thanks everyone for tuning into Stacker Chats. Please um, like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and let us know if you have any questions either below in the comments or on Twitter. Thanks, Maneev, so much for being here. We'll see you soon. Thanks a lot.